Welcome back, everybody. We are once again in the 2-5 streets here at Morongo, and we get into the game for a total of $500. But the first two hours of the game was very quiet, nothing really happened, and we actually ended up losing quite a bit of our stack. So we end up adding on for quite a bit, and we're going to move right into the first hand. Let's go. Pocket 9's in the cutoff. There's one limp in middle position, and I raised up to $25. We end up getting three callers, so I already know that this is going to be quite a fun table, and it's going to be quite a fun flop as well. Nine, eight, eight. We flop a full house. Let's go. Been car dead for hours. We finally get something going here. When the action checks to me, I have so much of this board, it's going to be unlikely we're going to get called. I think a bet here would be okay, too. Get some value from straight draws, and maybe they have an eight or something like that. But I decide to play a little deceptive here and check it back, so the action's going to check around, leading us to a turn card, which is the King of Diamonds. The action checks over to the hijack player who bets out for $25, and now we have a decision whether to call or raise. Do we want to build the pot now and get a bunch of money on the river, or do we want to slow play and maybe bring somebody else into the pot? Maybe they can hit their draw and we can get paid on the river. I'm not really sure. Both options seem kind of fine. I decide to go with a smallish raise to $70. I don't think a king is ever going to fold this turn, and if he has an 8, we want to get maximum value. He also will probably call us with a hand like Jack-10 or 10-7, so he does end up putting in the call, leading us to a river card, which is the 10 of diamonds. He checks it over to me, and now we want to decide what kind of bet we want to put out here. The 10 of diamonds shouldn't really change too much unless he had a hand like Queen-Jack. I think the opponent is most likely going to have a king or an 8. Maybe the off chance that he rivered the straight was 6-7. In the moment, I decided to go for a big bet the size of the pot for $240, putting him in the tank. Hopefully, he can pay us off here with top pair or trips. He goes into the tank for a little while before mucking his cards. Maybe we got a little bit greedy there. Uh, looking at it after the fact, I think a half pot bet would be a little bit better because we're basically only targeting an 8. We still want to get paid off by top pair, and I think 240 is just a little bit too big. Regardless, we're going to move on to the next hand. We are in the straddle with Jack-7 offsuit, and the player to my left raises it up blind to $15. The middle position player puts in the call, and I'm going to defend my straddle against a blind raiser. So, I put in the call as well. We're going to a flop, which is Queen, Jack, 8, Rainbow. The action's going to check over to middle position, who puts out a bet of $25. Sitting with middle pair here, I'm not going to go anywhere, so I stick in the call. The other player folds, leading us to a turn card, which is the three of hearts. Not going to be leading into him here, I check it over to the middle position player. He decides to take a free river card, which is the seven of diamonds. Rivering two pair for us, which is really good. And now once the turn goes check, check, I think it's pretty likely he's going to be capped at one pair. We want to maybe get a call from a jack or a queen here. So I put out a bet of $80, and luckily for us, he snap calls us. We show him two pair, and he shows us eight, seven, so the river got us paid. Let's go. Pretty lucky there. But we're going to scoop in this pot, and let's move on to the next hand. We have king-queen offsuit in the cutoff. There's two limps, and the hijack player raises to $45. Pretty big open size here, but over two limps, I totally understand. And I'm in the cutoff here. Do we want a three bet? Do we want a call? Do we want to fold? I think all options are probably okay. I like folding the least. Obviously, you guys probably know that. But I like being aggressive the most. So, I three bet up to $130. The action folds back around to the player in the hijack. And he very quickly goes all in. Alright, I'm going to fold my cards. It's been a little bit frustrating here. We've been pretty card dead. I know I showed a full house and then a river two pair. But that was over the span of three or four hours. So, we're holding on here. The table action is insane. And we are just waiting to pounce on our opponent's. Let's move on to the next hand where, I kid you not, we probably haven't played a hand for another hour. But we have pocket threes in middle position. We're going to get in there. I raise it up to $20. And we get three callers. Can we flop a set one time? No, we can't. It's ace, jack, eight, rainbow. I'm not going to be betting into three other opponents, so I start with a check here. I would definitely do this with a couple of sets and strong hands, but... Pocket three seems like a very reasonable hand to check here. The player on my left checks, and the player on the hijack now bets out for $70. When the button decides to put in the call and the action gets back over to me, you might be wondering, why are you showing us this hand? You're obviously not going to call, and you're just going to fold. I'll tell you right now, that is not what's about to happen. I get a little bit of a crazy idea here. The flop is ace-jack-8 that's heavily going to favor the original Razor's opening range. I have pocket aces and pocket jacks, where most of the other players would three-bet those hands. So... When the hijack bets out for $70 and the button just puts in the call, basically the button is dead money. He is very rarely going to have a hand stronger than one pair. Think about it. He would definitely raise jack-8, ace-8, ace-jack, pocket-8s. He would get value from so much. There's a ton of draws on board, so he wants to raise up those hands. So when he just puts in the call, it makes me think he just has one pair or like a gut shot or something like that. So when the action gets back to me, 
I have pocket threes. I have a terrible hand, but we're going to pretend like we have a good hand. I raise it up to $240, repping pocket aces, pocket jacks, ace jack, even pocket eights. And like I mentioned, I've been really quiet on this table. I hadn't played a hand. It's been about an hour between the last king queen offhand and this hand, so I actually look really tight to a lot of people. So I think this bluff is going to get through a large portion of the time. The player on my left folds, the hijack folds, and the button folds. We get it through. Let's go. Finally, something is going our way, but it didn't come easy. We had to stick our guts in the middle there, and it paid off. We're going to win this pot. Hopefully, we can keep some momentum going. Now, the table action has been really slow for me. It's been a tough game, but you know where the action isn't slow? On Club GG. Click the link in my description. There's 24-7 cash games and tournaments. And let me tell you, the games are good. So click that link in the description, and I hope I see you there. We look down at a familiar sight, King Queen off in the cutoff. There's one limp and the early position player raises it up to $40. The low jack calls in between and the action is on me. Now, I mentioned earlier we have all three options. I think folding might be the best option here, especially in a raked game, but you know me, I like to be aggressive. I threw bet up to $150. Now, looking back at it, this is a little bit loose. With the player in between, it definitely makes it more inclined for me to squeeze, but we are facing an under-the-gun limp with an under-the-gun one ISO raise, so it's pretty strong, but we're going to go in position on the early position player when they put in the call. Heads up to a flop, which is Jack-6-10 with two hearts. Not the worst flop in the world because we're open-ended. Any ace or nine would give us the straight. If it's not a heart, we will have the nuts. I have pocket jacks and pocket tens on this board, but the player in early position should have all three of the sets as well. So... There's still some strong hands he could have, but we have aces, kings, and queens where he is very unlikely to have those hands because he would most likely 4-bet them. So, when he checks, I'm going to put out a C-bet of $110. And the early position player decides to click me back a min raise to $220. It's a little bit strange here, but obviously sitting with an open ender and two overcards, I'm never going to be folding for this price. So, I stick in the call to evaluate a turn card. The turn card comes the six of spades pairing the board, and now the player in early position decides to slow down and check. So after min raising me on the flop, he decides to check this turn card. Definitely seems a little bit strange, but the question is, what do we want to do? Do we want to check and realize our equity, try to hit the river, or do we want to pull a bluff here? And it's an interesting concept because we don't have any hearts in our hand, meaning it could be more likely our opponent has a hand like king, queen of hearts, ace, queen of hearts, ace, king of hearts, maybe queen, jack of hearts. Obviously, that'd be top pair. But like I mentioned, we do have over pairs in our range, aces, kings, and queens, where they probably do not. So the question that we have is, do we want to try and represent those over pairs? Because those hands would probably want to try to bet this turn. Before we do anything, let's think about what our opponent could have. He would definitely check raise us on the flop with a set. Pocket jacks, pocket tens, and pocket sixes. The turn card is actually really good for us because it narrows down the combos of pocket sixes to one, meaning it would be quads. Pocket jacks and pocket tens are definitely going to be unlikely. I do think it's possible that he could check raise us with a hand like king queen, maybe king queen of hearts, ace queen of hearts, ace king of hearts, a combo draw, something like that. It's also possible that he could check raise with jack ten or ace jack. So out of all those hands I just mentioned, there's only two of them that wouldn't be in a tough spot if I jammed all in, and that's pocket jacks and pocket tens, obviously having a full house. But every other hand that I mentioned would probably be in a six spot if I went all in. Even jack ten, the turn card, counterfeits their two pair, meaning they're losing to aces, kings, or queens. So... I decide to turn my king queen into a bluff here and go all in for $540. And he snap calls, showing us pocket tens. We are drawing dead. Not really what I was hoping to see. I'm not going to lie to you guys, but the river card is irrelevant. We're going to lose this pot and we're going to lose everything we have. We're going to go home and come back the next day. Sometimes the bluffs just don't work out and you definitely got to show the wins and the losses. I thought we had a pretty good thought process, uh, having no hearts in our hand, repping the over pairs, but he just had a set. He checked when he filled up. One of my favorite quotes in poker is, if your bluffs always work, you don't bluff enough. So this one didn't work. We're going to shake it off and move on. I'll see you guys tomorrow. The next day, we played 1-3 for a little while, and it was definitely one of the worst tables I've ever played at. Uh, we actually ended up losing $200, which wasn't great, but we did get our name called for the 2-5, so we were in for $600 total, and I'm ready to battle. First hand, we are under the gun plus one with ace five of clubs. There's a $10 straddle. You know the table is going to be fun when the straddles are flying right off the bat. I raise it up to $30 and the middle position player puts in the call. The player in the hijack is a good reg and he three bits up to $110. Folds back to me and now we have a decision. In my opinion, we could either four bet or fold. Everybody loves a good four bet with ace five suited, especially me. So I four bet up to $275. Now, this is a massive mistake because... 
I mentioned earlier, I'm only in for $600. Putting in half of my stack is horrendous. I think if we're deeper, I could definitely go for a 4-bet bluff here, but I should probably just be folding this. And now the hijack player goes all in. And now we're in a spot where I put in half my stack and I have a really bad hand. I know we're behind. Do we want to gamble? In the moment, I decided I like snap folded in the moment, um, which I think was a mistake because we're getting a ridiculous price. Even if we're behind, we just have to stick in the call here uh, with about only 300 more to win about $1,200. So definitely a mistake to fold here and a mistake to four bet. Not really a good start to this session. He shows me pocket tens, but we're going to try to shake that one off. We add on for $500 more. And we're going to pretend like that never happened. That was not my greatest work, let me tell you. The poker gods are now giving us a chance to redeem ourselves because we look down at ace five of hearts in the low jack. There's a middle position open and the action gets to me. I really like three betting this hand, especially in position. So that's what I do. I make it $60 and we get two cold calls, one from the cutoff and the button. And then the middle position player comes along as well. So we're going to go four ways to the flop in a three bet pot. And the flop is actually really good for us. It's three, three deuce with two hearts. We flop a flush draw with a gut shot to the straight flush. When the middle position player checks, I think a bet here is going to do a lot of good things. We want to build the pot for when we do hit our draw. Obviously, any four or any heart would give us the best hand. We also have two overcards, a five or an ace. Not sure if they're good or not, but I put out a bet of $85. The cutoff gets out of the way, but the player on the button puts in the call. And let me tell you, this lady is crazy. She likes to play a lot of pots with any two cards, so this is getting me excited. If we hit our heart, hopefully we'll get paid off. The other player folds, and we're going to a turn card, which is the 10 of hearts. We drill the nut flush, redemption with the ace. Now we're just heads up, so what do we want to do? Do we want to check or bet? And I think against a player that's this crazy, we probably want to check and try and induce some bluffs if she had a hand like 5-4, 6-5, 6-4, uh, ace-4, anything like that. Maybe she'll want to start bluffing. So I start with a check, and she falls for the trap and bets $120. I don't usually do this in live poker, and that is really slow play out of position because once it gets to the river, when you check, a lot of times they're just going to check back, but against a specific opponent, I think it's a good idea to extra slow play this one. So I just stick in the call, river car is the eight of spades, and I check. I'm praying that she doesn't check back. She doesn't. She jams for 200. I call. We show the nut flush, and she actually shows us three, four. So she flop trips. Pretty insane hand there. That tells you all you need to know about her. Cold calling three bets with three, four. I can already feel that this is going to be a fun table. Hopefully we can find some max value spots. And in the next one, we have ace queen offsuit and the cutoff. There's a middle position raised to $20 and the low jack three bets to $60. Now, these are the two best players at the table. The player in middle position, if you remember from the last vlog, was the guy I played a bunch of hands against and that I hero called with pocket jacks. And the player in the low jack is the guy who I four bet earlier with ace five suited. That guy is a regular here at Morongo. So sitting with ace queen, this is another four bet or fold spot, but this time I'm a lot deeper and I'm in position on both opponents. This is going to look insanely strong, and even a hand like pocket jacks is not going to feel too good. So, you guys know, I love four bets with ace-queen because it blocks aces, queens, ace-king, a lot of the strong hands that they could have. I go for it. I four bet to $155, and the action goes back around to the middle position player. He puts his cards into the muck. It's relieving to see, and so does the low jack. We get one through, and we're feeling it. The flow state is here. Let's keep it rolling. We have ace-king offsuit in the small blind, and the action lady that I was telling you about limps in early position. The cutoff now raises it up to $40, and we're in the small blind. We're going to use a 4x sizing here for our 3-bet. I think I could even go a little bit bigger, but I decide on a size of $160. And we only get one caller, and I'm going to let you guess who that is. Yep, it's the lady in early position. She wants to play pots, and I am here for it. So, we go to a flop, which is 8-7-4 with two spades. An absolutely horrendous flop for us. Sitting out of position, this board is definitely going to favor the in-position player a lot more than me. Her range is probably close to 100% of hands here, so I decide to start with a check here and see what she does. She decides to put out a half-pot bet of $160, and sitting with ace high here with no spades, obviously not in a great spot, but you know that she could show up with any cards here, so I think we do have to peel the flop and evaluate a turn card. So that's what I do. I put in the call, and the turn is the seven of diamonds. It pairs the board. I think it's a pretty good card for our hand because it makes sets less likely, two pairs less likely. So once again, I start with a check, and she pretty quickly checks it back. It's pretty relieving to see. We might have the best hand, but the river card is the jack of spades. 
It's a terrible card because now we lose to flushes, we lose to 10-9, jack-9, jack-10. It's a really bad card for us. I start with a check, obviously, and now she puts out $400, sitting with ace high. Definitely not going to put in the hero call here. I fold my cards, and me and her are one and one. A few hands later, we look down at the exact same hand, ace-king offsuit in the hijack. The low jack player makes it $20 to go, and I'm definitely going to be through betting this and make it 60 there's a cold caller from the big blind. I think you already know who it is. And the low jack player comes along as well. So we're going to a flop, which is queen, nine, six with two clubs. Another really bad flop. The action is going to start by checking over to me as I would expect it to. And the question is, do we want to see bet in the two players or do we want to just check? My thought process was a small bet could get it done here sometimes. And then if we get called, we could just check and give up. Um, so that's what I do. I put out a small bet of $75, but unfortunately for us, both players are going to stick around. So we're definitely just going to shut down unless the turn is like the Ace of Hearts or something. Uh, but the turn card does not come the Ace of Hearts. It's a three of spades. And surprise, surprise, the big blind leads out for $500. Um, okay, the low jack folds and with Ace high, $500. It's a really tough spot for me, man, but I think I got to let my cards go this time. I fold and she picks up another pot. Not sure what she had, but I'm not too sure if I can give her that much credit. Now, I promise you that this isn't a loop, but in the next hand, we look down at ace-king offsuit again. Listen, I love ace-king, but the flops have been absolutely horrendous. We haven't gotten anywhere, and we've just lost a little bit of money, but hopefully we can get it back in this hand. There's one limp, and the player in the low jack raises it up to $30. This is that really good aggressive player I was telling you about all last vlog. He's back on my table. He raises it up to $30. I'm going to be three betting here. I make it $90 to go. And surprise, we get a cold call from the big blind. And surprisingly, the under the gun limper calls as well. But the action folds back around to the player in the low jack. And I'm going to tell you right now, he does not decide to call. And he does not decide to fold. He decides to go all in. He covers everybody at the table. I have a little under $1,000 in my stack. And with two cold callers to my three bet, it's definitely a juicy squeeze spot. Facing a 3-bet from a player that he's seen 3-bet him pretty light. He also saw me fold to a jam after I 4-bet earlier, so he definitely knows I'm capable of pulling a move. And then when there's two cold callers in between, it's basically just dead money, so I wouldn't be surprised to see a light squeeze here. Therefore, with ace-king, I am not going to be folding. We go for the max gamble. I put in the call and the other players fold. We're going to see what he has. He shows us pocket kings. We are not in good shape here. We need an ace to suck out. This is a massive pot. Can we find the ace? Let's go off to a flop. The flop is ace, queen, deuce, rainbow. We flop him almost dead. He has one out. Can we hold? The turn card is the nine of spades, and the river card is the six of spades. We hold in a massive pot. I guess the third time is the charm. After losing two in a row with ace, king, we make it all back and some. So, pretty lucky there. Thank you, dealer. And we're going to move on to the next hand where we get an upgrade from ace, king to pocket aces let's go man they're beautiful there's a crazy old man coffee in middle position and he decides to open raise to 50 dollars now let me remind you this is a 2-5 game so that's a 10 big blind open and i'm last to act here on the straddle he only has about 200 behind so it's a question of should i go all in or should i call with aces here with only $200 behind for him, I feel like it's a really good spot to just slow play. So, that's what I do. I, I slow play the aces here. Some of you might not be a fan of it, but it works quite often when you're short and you have not too much behind. You can get it all in on the flopper turn. So, we're going to a flop, which is queen, queen, seven with two diamonds. We don't hold the ace of diamonds in our hand, but out of position to him, I'm going to check. Unfortunately, he goes for a check back. The turn card now makes the board a little bit worse. It's the eight of diamonds putting a flush out there. Although, I do think he would bet the flop with a flush draw. Um, so, sitting here, I think our hand needs a little bit of protection without a diamond. A diamond on the river would obviously be a disaster. And we can get value from one diamond hands, like king jack with a diamond, and pocket sixes with a diamond, and ace jack with a diamond. So, you guys get the point. I put out a bet of $60, hoping to jam on a clean river card. He decides to come along. And we are going to see a river, which is horrendous. It's the six of diamonds. Four to a flush out there. We lose to any diamond uh, or any queen. So sitting with no diamond aces, I guess we could win sometimes, but I'm definitely not going to bet into him. I check, and we're pretty glad to see him quickly check back. We might have the winner. I turn over aces, and he shows us pocket threes with a diamond. Uh, that's pretty sick, man. I'm not going to lie to you. The river... Uh, 
holy smokes, dude. I don't even know what to say. But we just sucked down on Pocket Kings. I can't be too mad about it. I assume if he open raised to $50, he probably wasn't going to fold to the $200 jam behind. So uh, not too mad about it. The luck goes around in poker, and we're going to move on to the last hand of the night. We have two sevens, pocket sevens and the low jack. This is an under-the-gun raise to $20. I decide to stick in the call and go set mining, and now the guy I was telling you about in the last hand, the crazy old man coffee, he three bets to $60. It's a little bit on the smaller side with the caller in between, but when the under-the-gun player calls, I decide to stick in the call as well. We're going to a flop, which is not great for us. King, Jack, 10, Rainbow. Three overcards, straights available. Uh, really just not what we're looking for. But fortunately for us, the action is going to check around, and we see the seven of hearts on the turn. We improve to trips. Wow, what a card we see there on the turn. The under-the-gun player now leads out for $100. Now, we do have a set, but there's still a few straights out there. We lose to queen nine, nine eight, and ace queen. So we're not in the clear just yet. But we do have a hand that needs some protection, and there's more value hands to be had than those straights like two pairs, king jack, king 10, ace king, stuff like that. So I raise it up to $315, and now the crazy old man coffee goes all in for $500. Obviously, I'm never going to fold to this bet, but I think it probably is likely that he flopped the straight with like ace queen, or he has a bigger set like kings or jacks and wanted to slow play the flop. Now, what I didn't expect was for the under-the-gun player to re-jam all in for $1,200 total. This spot is not looking too good for me. Uh, I think one, if not both, of the players have a straight. So, actually, in-game, I made a pretty easy fold here. It just seems like we're going to be beat 100% of the time. And they're going to go off to a run out. Hopefully, the board doesn't pair. It'd probably give us the best hand. But the river card was the six of hearts. We definitely would have lost. And the under-the-gun player shows nine, eight of clubs for the turn straight. And the crazy old man coffee shows pocket queens. Uh, so we actually had him beat, but I'm not sure what he was thinking. There you go. That's the table for you. But we made a really nice fold there. The turn was pretty sick, giving us a set, giving him the straight. And uh, I'm really happy we found the fold there. We're going to wrap up our session now and head to the cage. We were out for $1,125. That's a loss of $175. It was kind of a comeback session. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm going to be pumping out a lot more content. We're going to be going back to Dallas. We're going to play a few home games. So hope you guys enjoy it. Click the subscribe button, and I will see you in the next one.